Um, listen, we just got back f uh, from UNC Chapel Hill this past weekend. Uh, we just completed our fourth meet of the indoor season. We've gone to CNU, we've gone to Virginia Tech, we've gone to Penn State, and now we have just gotten back from UNC Chapel Hill. Um, up to this point, we've had a really, really good indoor season. I couldn't be happier. Um, we've kind of set the tone. We've laid the foundation for the indoor championships. We're going to be leaving a week from Wednesday, uh, which is the 23rd of February, and the conference championships are on Friday and Saturday, February 25th and 26th, but we'll get into that in a second. Uh, this past weekend, we won a total of nine events. Uh, we won six of them on the men's side. We won three of them on the women's side. Uh, the people that won events on the men's side this past weekend are Jordan Neal. Um, he's our school record holder in the 3K. Um, he ran the mile for the first time this year and ran 4.13, uh, which is a great mile time um, indoors. Uh, another person that had won again was Dennis Aliata. He's our defending champion in the shot put. Um, he wins that event again at Chapel Hill. Our 4x4 four four, um, did very, very well this past weekend on the men's side. They won that event. 60 meter dash, a football guy is on our roster. Torrance Hunt from the Durham area. Torrance won the 60 and I think if things go well there um, and if he stays focused, there's some good things that are going to happen to him here in a week and a half. Mario Briscoe, one of our senior team captains, wins the high hurdles. And last but not least, um, Austin Lewis wins the long jump. So those were the six titles on the men's side. On the women's side, uh, we won the 4x4 four four ladies, uh, which is a great group. We've run 343, which is one of the faster times in the nation right now. We won that event this past weekend. Brittany Copeland, one of our senior team captains. She holds six school records on our team. Uh, she ran the 3K for the first time this year indoors, and she ended up running a very nice time of 9.39. Uh, the school record is 936, which is hers. And then last but not least, Tiffany Harris ends up winning the 200 meter dash. So those were the nine titles that we won. And right now, Brian, we're doing very well with enthusiasm. We're doing very well with excitement. Uh, the kids are passionate about um, what might happen here over the next week and a half. We're always constantly looking at trying to improve at the conference championships. Um, as you know, we have a cross country championship, we have an indoor championship, and we have an outdoor championship. We have six championships, uh, so we got a lot, of, a lot of times to mess up, but we've also got a lot of times that we can do well too. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to uh, that meet coming up very, very shortly. Yeah, a guy like Torrance, when you have a football player on your team, on your track team, is it, when you look at that, does it add, I guess, a name that people recognize when they look at it? Does it bring attention? Do you like that kind of thing? Absolutely. Good question, Brian. The thing is with Torrance Hunt, he's a sophomore this year. Um, he was a redshirt freshman. He played this year, got some playing time. Coach McNeil and I, uh, wonderful guy, great coach. We have this working relationship that if a football guy wants to come out and do track, uh, we welcome him under one condition, that they take it very, very serious. So Torrance did this last year. He's grown up um, a lot over that year. He's matured a lot. So he's a different runner this year than he was last year. He's more focused. He's more mature. But he brings credibility from the football side over to the track side. And as I mentioned earlier, I think if he stays focused, um, I'm going to stick my neck out, but I think he can win the Conference USA Championship in the 60-meter dash and uh, feel proud to maybe be called the champion and be one of the fastest guys in Conference USA on the football field. I know you look around and you see all the stuff that's being built, the softball team's buzzing about their stadium, the soccer complex and all those things. I know it's a pain in the short term having to get around that stuff and not having your own track and that here, right, where you can, you can have go out and practice on a daily basis. But do you look down the road and see the benefits it's going to have with recruiting, with, uh, with your on-the-field performance? Absolutely, Brian. I tell you what, um, I'm a very patient man, and patience is a virtue, as you well know. And uh, when I came on board here six years ago, um, I was excited to, you know, I was excited as then as I am now, and even more excited now to, uh, um, you know, to see that the administration and the chancellor and everybody involved um, you know, sees that uh, we needed these facilities badly and it's going to do all of those things you just mentioned um, and I can't wait for it to be done. So, you know, we've been going to Rose High School and the kids understand the short term of, um, you know, until we get this thing done, but when it's done, it's going to take our program to a, a, to a new um, level, no question. Re Recruiting is going to be easier, um, not that it's ever easy, but it's going to make it easier.